Section 29 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. First Samuel, chapters 18 to 26. This recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Michael Armenta. Chapter 18. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day, and would not let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant, because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him, and gave it to David, and his garments, even to his sword, and to his bow, and to his girdle. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass, as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with tabres, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played, and said, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand, and Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him, and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him, and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out, and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, because he went out and came in before them. And Saul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter Mirab, her will I give thee to wife, only be thou valiant for me, and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul said, Let not mine hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. And David said unto Saul, Who am I, and what is my life, or my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? But it came to pass at the time, when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given unto Adriel, the Mahalathite, to wife. And Michal, Saul's daughter, loved David. And they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. And Saul said, I will give him her, that 
she may be a snare to him, and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law, in the one of the twain. And Saul commanded his servants, saying, Commune with David secretly, and say, Behold, the king hath delight in thee, and all his servants love thee. Now therefore be the king's son-in-law. And Saul's servants spake those words in the ears of David. And David said, Seemeth it to you a light thing to be the king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man, and lightly esteemed? And the servants of Saul told him, saying, On this manner spake David. And Saul said, Thus shall ye say to David, The king desireth not any dowry, but an hundred foreskins of the Philistines, to be avenged of the king's enemies. But Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. And when his servants told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law, and the days were not expired. Wherefore David arose and went he and his men, and slew of the Philistines two hundred men. And David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full tale to the king, that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michal, his daughter, to wife. And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michal, Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass, after they went forth, that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul so that his name was much set by. Chapter 19 And Saul spake to Jonathan his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee, now therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee, and what I see, that I will tell thee. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee word very good. For he did put his life in his hand, and slew the Philistine, and the Lord wrought a great salvation for all Israel. Thou sawest it, and didst rejoice. Wherefore then wilt thou sin against innocent blood, to slay David without a cause. And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul sware, As the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan shewed him all those things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence, as in times past. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines, and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled from him. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul, as he sat in his house, with his javelin in his hand. 
and David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David, even to the wall with the javelin. But he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall. And David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michal, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life to-night, to-morrow thou shalt be slain. So Michal let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michal took an image and laid it in the bed, and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster, and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. And Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may slay him. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed, with a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. And Saul said unto my cow, Why hast thou deceived me so, and sent away mine enemy, that he is escaped? And my cow answered Saul, He said unto me, Let me go, why should I kill thee? So David fled and escaped and came to Samuel, to Ramah, and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naoth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naoth in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing, as appointed, over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. Then went he also to Ramah, and came to a great well that is in Siku. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they be at Naoth in Ramah. And he went thither to Naoth in Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Naoth in Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also, and prophesied before Samuel in like manner, and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore, they say, is Saul also among the prophets? Chapter 20 And David fled from Naoth in Ramah and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is mine iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father, that he seeketh my life? And he said unto him, God forbid, thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but that he will show it to me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. And David sware moreover, and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes, and he saith, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do it for thee. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, to-morrow is the new moon, 
and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at even. If thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he say thus, It is well, thy servant shall have peace. But if he be very wroth, then be sure that evil is determined by him. Therefore thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant. For thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be in me iniquity, slay me thyself. For why shouldst thou bring me to thy father? And Jonathan said, Far be it from thee. For if I knew, certainly, that evil were determined by my father to come upon thee, then would I not tell it thee. Then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me, or what if thy father answer thee roughly? And Jonathan said unto David, Come, and let us go out into the field. And they went out, both of them, into the field. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about to-morrow, any time, or the third day, and, behold, if there be good toward David, and I then send not unto thee, and shew it thee, the Lord do so, and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do thee evil, then I will shew it thee and send thee away, that thou mayest go in peace, and the Lord be with thee, as he hath been with my father. And thou shalt not only, while yet I live, shew me the kindness of the Lord, that I die not, but also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house, for ever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan caused David to swear again, because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. And when thou hast stayed three days, then thou shalt go down quickly, and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand, and thou shalt remain by the stone Azel. And I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send a lad, saying, Go find out the arrows. If I expressly say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee, take them. Then come thou, for there is peace to thee, and no hurt, as the Lord liveth. But if I say thus unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are beyond thee, Go thy way, for the Lord hath sent thee away. And, as touching the matter which thou and I have spoken of, behold, the Lord be between thee and me for ever. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat. And the king sat upon his seat, as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought, Something hath befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. 
and it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty. And Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet, neither yesterday nor to-day? And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. And he said, Let me go, I pray thee, for our family hath a sacrifice in the city, and my brother, he hath commanded me to be there. And now, if I have found favour in thine eyes, let me get away, I pray thee, and see my brethren. Therefore he cometh not unto the king's table. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thine own confusion, and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul, his father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What hath he done? And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him, whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to slay David. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger, and did eat no meat the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David, because his father had done him shame. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at the time appointed with David, and a little lad with him. And he said unto his lad, Run, find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad, and said, Is not the arrow beyond thee? And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed! Haste, stay not. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows, and came to his master. But the lad knew not anything, only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his artillery unto his lad, and said unto him, Go, carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place toward the south, and fell on his face to the ground, and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another, and wept one with another, until David exceeded. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be between me and thee, and between my seed and thy seed for ever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. Chapter 21 Then came David to Nob, to Ahimelech the priest, and Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David. And he said unto him, Why art thou alone, and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech the priest, The king hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now, therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, or what there is present. 
And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hallowed bread. If the young men have kept in themselves, at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth the uh, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the shoe bread that was taken from before the Lord, to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Doeg, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. And David said unto Ahimelech, And is there not here under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul, and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David, the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, ye see, the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of mad men, that ye have brought this fellow to play the mad man in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Chapter 22 David therefore departed thence, and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them. And there were with him about four hundred men, and David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you, till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold. Depart, and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed, and came into the forest of Harith. When Saul heard that David was discovered, and the men that were with him, now Saul abode in Gibeah under a tree in Ramah, having his spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. Then Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards, 
and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, that all of you have conspired against me, and there is none that sheweth me that my son hath made a league with the son of Jesse, and there is none of you that is sorry for me, or sheweth unto me that my son hath stirred up my servants against me, to lie in wait, as at this day. Then answered Doeg the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, and he inquired of the Lord for him, and gave him victuals, and gave him the sword of Goliath the Philistine. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob. And they came, all of them, to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, thou son of Ahitub. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, in that thou hast given him bread and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait, as at this day? And Ahimelech answered the king, and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honourable in thine house? Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me. Let not the king impute any thing unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father. For thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. And the king said, Thou shalt surely die, Ahimelech, thou and all thy father's house. And the king said unto the footmen that stood about him, Turn and slay the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled, and did not shew it to me. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priests of the Lord. And the king said to Doeg, Turn thou, and fall upon the priests. And Doeg the Edomite turned, and he fell upon the priests, and slew on that day fourscore and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. And Nob, the city of the priests, smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and sucklings and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped, and fled after David. And Abiathar shewed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priests. And David said unto Abiathar, I knew it that day when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life, but with me thou shalt be in safeguard. Chapter 23 Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Keilah, and they rob the threshing-floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines, and save Keilah. And David's men said unto him, Behold, 
we be afraid here in Judah. How much more than if we come to Kila against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord yet again, and the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Kila, for I will deliver the Philistines into thine hand. So David and his men went to Kila, and fought with the Philistines, and brought away their cattle, and smote them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Kila. And it came to pass, when Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David, to Kila, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. And it was told Saul that David was come to Kila. And Saul said, God hath delivered him into mine hand, for he is shut in by entering into a town that hath gates and bars. And Saul called all the people together to war, to go down to Kila, to besiege David and his men. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. And he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring hither the ephod. Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, Thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah, to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down, as thy servant hath heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. Then said David, Will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will deliver thee up. David and his men, which were about six hundred, arose and departed out of Keilah, and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah and he forbear to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds, and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life, and David was in a wilderness of Ziph in a wood. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee, and that also Saul my father knoweth. And they two made a covenant before the Lord. And David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. Then came up the Ziphites to Saul, to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself with us in strongholds in the wood, in the hill of Hakila, which is on the south of Jeshimon? Now therefore, O king, come down, according to all the desire of thy soul, to come down, and our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hand. And Saul said, Blessed be ye of the Lord, for ye have compassion on me. Go, I pray you, prepare yet, and know and see his place where his haunt is, and who hath seen him there? For it is told me that he dealeth very subtly. See therefore, and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hideth himself, and come ye again to me with the certainty, and I will go with you. And it shall come to pass, if he be in the land, that I will search him out 
throughout all the thousands of Judah. And they arose, and went to Ziph before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon, in the plain on the south of Jeshimon. Saul also, and his men, went to seek him. And they told David, Wherefore he came down into a rock, and abode in the wilderness of Maon. And when Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon. And Saul went on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away, for fear of Saul. For Saul and his men compassed David and his men round about to take them. But there came a messenger unto Saul, saying, Haste thee, and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David, and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called that place Selam Molikoth. And David went up from thence, and dwelt in the strongholds at Engedi. Chapter 24 And it came to pass, when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Engedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men, out of all Israel, and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep goats by the way, where was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto the men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants with these words, and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave, and went on his way. David also arose afterward, and went out of the cave, and cried after Saul, saying, My lord, the king! And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth, and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt? Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord had delivered thee to-day into mine hand in the cave, and some bade me kill thee. But mine eye spared thee, and I said, I will not put forth mine hand against my Lord for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe, and killed thee not. Know thou, and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand, and I have not sinned against thee. Yet thou huntest my soul to take it, the Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee. But mine hand shall not be upon thee. As saith the proverb of the ancients, Wickedness proceedeth from the wicked, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. 
after whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog, after a flea? The Lord, therefore, be judge, and judge between me and thee, and see, and plead my case, and deliver me out of thine hand. And it came to pass, when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son, David? And Saul lifted up his voice, and wept. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And thou hast shewed me this day how that the Lord hast dealt well with me, for as much as when the Lord had delivered me into thine hand, thou killedst me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good, for that thou hast done unto me this day. And now, behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Swear now therefore unto me, by the Lord, that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, and that thou wilt not destroy my name out of thy father's house. And David sware unto Saul, and Saul went home. But David and his men get them up unto the hold. Chapter 25 and Samuel died. And all the Israelites were gathered together, and lamented him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose, and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Maon, whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great, and he had three thousand sheep and a thousand goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding, and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep, and David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Now thy shepherds which were with us we hurt them not, neither was there aught missing unto them. All the while they were in Carmel. Ask the young men, and they will shew thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favour in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thine hand unto thy servants, and to thy son David. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David, and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants, and said, Who is David, and who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water, and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers, and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So David's young men turned their way, and went again, and came and told him all those sayings. And David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. 
and they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David about four hundred men, and two hundred abode by the stuff. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us, both by night and day, all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master, and against all his household. For he is such a son of Belial, that a man cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste, and took two hundred loaves, and two bottles of wine, and five sheep ready-dressed, and five measures of parched corn, and an hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. And it was so, as she rode on the ass, that she came down by the covert on the hill. And, behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was amiss of all that pertained unto him, and he hath requited me evil for good. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David, if I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass, and fell before David on her face, and bowed herself to the ground, and fell at his feet, and said, Upon me, my lord, upon me let this iniquity be, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience, and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not, my lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of my lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my lord, as the lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies, and they that seek evil to my lord, be as Nabal. And now, this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the lord will certainly make my lord a sure house, because my lord fighteth at the battles of the lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee, and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the lord thy God, and the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out, as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass, when the lord shall have done to my lord according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offence of heart unto my lord, either that thou hast shed blood causeless, or that my lord hath avenged himself. But when the lord shall have dealt well with my lord, then remember thine handmaid. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. 
and blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou, which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood, and from avenging myself with mine own hand. For in every deed, as the Lord of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hadst hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. But it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And it came to pass, about ten days after, that the Lord smote Nabal, that he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and hath kept his servant from evil. For the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee, to take thee to him to wife. And she arose, and bowed herself on her face to the earth, and said, Behold, let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my lord. And Abigail hasted, and arose, and rode upon an ass, with five damsels of her that went after her. And she went after the messengers of David, and became his wife. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel, and they were also both of them his wives. But Saul had given Michal, his daughter, David's wife, to Phaltai, the son of Laish, which was of Galim. Chapter 26 And the Ziphites came unto Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself in the hill of Hakila, which is before Jeshimon? Then Saul arose, and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having three thousand chosen men of Israel with him, to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul pitched in the hill of Hakila, which is before Jeshimon, by the way. But David abode in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies, and understood that Saul was come in very deed. And David arose, and came to the place where Saul had pitched. And David beheld the place where Saul lay, and Abner the son of Ner, the captain of his host. And Saul lay in the trench, and the people pitched round about him. Then answered David, and said to Ahimelech the Hittite, and to Abishai the son of Zeruiah, brother to Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul, to the camp? So David and Abishai came to the people by night. And, behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster, but 
Abner and the people lay round about him. Then said Abishai to David, God hath delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear, even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. And David said to Abishai, Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed, and be guiltless? David said furthermore, As the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. But I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster, and the cruse of water, and let us go. So David took the spear and the cruse of water from Saul's bolster, and they get them away. And no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awaked, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord was fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side, and stood on the top of a hill afar off, a great space being between them. And David cried to the people, and to Abner the son of Ner, saying, Answerest thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who art thou that criest to the king? And David said to Abner, Art not thou a valiant man? And who is like to thee in Israel? Wherefore then hast thou not kept thy lord the king? For there came one of the people in to destroy the king, my lord. This thing is not good that thou hast done. As the Lord liveth, ye are worthy to die, because ye have not kept your master, the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is, and the cruse of water that was at his bolster. And Saul knew David's voice, and said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, Wherefore doth my lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done? Or what evil is in mine hand? Now therefore I pray thee, let my lord, the king, hear the words of his servant. If the lord have stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. But if they be the children of men, cursed be they before the lord, for they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the lord, saying, Go serve other gods. Now, therefore, let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord, for the king of Israel is come to seek out a flea, as when one doth hunt a partridge in the mountains. Then said Saul, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool, and have erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Behold, the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. The Lord render to every man his righteous and his faithfulness, for the Lord delivered thee into my hand to-day. But I would not stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord, 
and let him deliver me out of all this tribulation. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David, thou shalt both do great things, and also shalt still prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. End of section 29Section 30 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version, 1 Samuel, chapters 26 to 31. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta. Chapter 26 And the Ziphites came unto Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself in the hill of Hakilah? which is before Jeshimon? Then Saul arose, and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having three thousand chosen men of Israel with him, to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul pitched in the hill of Hakilah, which is before Jeshimon, by the way. But David abode in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies, and understood that Saul was come in very deed. And David arose, and came to the place where Saul had pitched. And David beheld the place where Saul lay, and Abner the son of Ner, the captain of his host. And Saul lay in the trench, and the people pitched round about him. Then answered David, and said to Ahimelech the Hittite, and to Abishai the son of Zeruiah, brother to Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul, to the camp? So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and, behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster. But Abner and the people lay round about him. Then said Abishai to David, God hath delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear, even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. And David said to Abishai, Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed, and be guiltless? David said furthermore, As the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. But, I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster, and the cruse of water, and let us go. So David took the spear and the cruse of water from Saul's bolster, and they get them away. And no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awaked for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord was fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side, and stood on the top of a hill afar off, a great space being between them. And David cried to the people, and to Abner the son of Ner, saying, Answerest thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who art thou that criest to the king? And David said to Abner, Art not thou a valiant man, and who is like to thee in Israel? Wherefore then hast thou not kept thy lord the king? For there came one of the people in to destroy the king, my lord. 
this thing is not good that thou hast done as the lord liveth ye are worthy to die because ye have not kept your master the lord's anointed and now see where the king's spear is and the cruse of water that was at his bolster and saul knew david's voice and said is this thy voice my son david and david said it is my voice my lord o king and he said wherefore doth my lord thus pursue after his servant for what have i done or what evil is in mine hand now therefore i pray thee let my lord the king hear the words of his servant if the lord have stirred thee up against me let him accept an offering but if they be the children of men cursed be they before the lord for they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the lord saying go serve other gods now therefore let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the lord for the king of israel is come to seek out a flea as when one doth hunt a partridge in the mountains then said saul i have sinned return my son david for i will no more do thee harm because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day behold i have played the fool and have erred exceedingly and david answered and said behold the king's spear and let one of the young men come over and fetch it the lord render to every man his righteous and his faithfulness for the lord delivered thee into my hand to-day but i would not stretch forth mine hand against the lord's anointed and behold as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the lord and let him deliver me out of all this tribulation then saul said to david blessed be thou my son david thou shalt both do great things and also shalt still prevail so david went on his way and saul returned to his place chapter twenty seven and david said in his heart i shall now perish one day by the hand of saul there is nothing better for me than that i should speedily escape into the land of the philistines and saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in any coast of israel so shall i escape out of his hand and david arose and he passed over with the six hundred men that were with him unto achish the son of maok king of gath and david dwelt with achish at gath he and his men every man with his household even david with his two wives ahinoam the jezreelitess and abigail the carmelitess nabal's wife and it was told saul that david was fled to gath and he sought no more again for him and david said unto achish if i have now found grace in thine eyes let them give me a place in some town in the country that i may dwell there for why should thy servant dwell in the royal city with thee then achish gave him ziklag that day wherefore ziklag pertaineth unto the kings of judah unto this day and the time that david dwelt in the country of the philistines was a full year and four months and david and his men went up and invaded the jeshurites and the jezrites and the amalekites for those nations were of old the inhabitants of the land as thou goest to shore even unto the land of egypt and david smote the land and left neither man nor woman alive 
and took away the sheep and the oxen and the asses and the camels and the apparel and returned and came to achish and achish said whither have ye made a road to-day and david said against the south of judah and against the south of the jeremelites and against the south of the kenites and david saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to gath saying lest they should tell on us saying so did david and so will be his manner all the while he dwelleth in the country of the philistines and achish believed david saying he hath made his people israel utterly to abhor him therefore he shall be my servant for ever chapter twenty eight and it came to pass in those days that the philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with israel and achish said unto david know thou assuredly that thou shalt go out with me to battle thou and thy men and david said to achish surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do and achish said to david therefore will i make thee keeper of mine head for ever now samuel was dead and all israel had lamented him and buried him in ramah even in his own city and saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land and the philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in shunem and saul gathered all israel together and they pitched in gilboa and when saul saw the host of the philistines he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled and when saul inquired of the lord the lord answered him not neither by dreams nor by urim nor by prophets then said saul unto his servants seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit that i may go to her and inquire of her and his servants said to him behold there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at endor and saul disguised himself and put on other raiment and he went and two men with him and they came to the woman by night and he said i pray thee divine unto me by the familiar spirit and bring me him up whom i shall name unto thee and the woman said unto him behold thou knowest what saul hath done how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die and saul sware to her by the lord saying as the lord liveth there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing then said the woman whom shall i bring up unto thee and he said bring me up samuel and when the woman saw samuel she cried with a loud voice and the woman spake to saul saying why hast thou deceived me for thou art saul and the king said unto her be not afraid for what sawest thou and the woman said unto saul i saw gods ascending out of the earth and he said unto her what form is he of and she said an old man cometh up and he is covered with a mantle and saul perceived that it was samuel and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself 
and Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and is become thine enemy? And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me. For the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand, and given it to thy neighbor, even to David, because thou obeyedst not the voice of the Lord, nor executedst his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistine, and to-morrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines, then Saul fell straightway all along on the earth, and was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all the day nor all the night. And the woman came unto Saul, and saw that he was sore troubled, and said unto him, Behold, Thine handmaid hath obeyed thy voice, and I have put my life in my hand, and have hearkened unto thy words which thou spakest unto me. Now therefore, I pray thee, hearken thou also unto the voice of thine handmaid, and let me set a morsel of bread before thee, that thou mayest have strength when thou goest on thy way. But he refused, and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, compelled him, and he hearkened unto their voice. So he arose from the earth and sat upon the bed. And the woman had a fat calf in the house, and she hasted it and killed it, and took flour and kneaded it, and did bake unleavened bread thereof. And she brought it before Saul and before his servants, and they did eat. Then they rose up, and went away that night. Chapter 29 Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies to Aphek, and the Israelites pitched by a fountain which is in Jezreel. And the lords of the Philistines passed on by hundreds and by thousands. But David and his men passed on in the re-reward with Achish. Then said the princes of the Philistines, What do these Hebrews here? And Achish said unto the princes of the Philistines, Is not this David? the servant of Saul, the king of Israel, which hath been with me these days, or these years, and I have found no fault in him since he fell unto me unto this day. And the princes of the Philistines were wroth with him, and the princes of the Philistines said unto him, Make this fellow return, that he may go again to his place which thou hast appointed him and let him not go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he be an adversary to us, for wherewith should he reconcile himself unto his master? Should it not be with the heads of these men? Is not this David, of whom they sang one to another in dances, saying, Saul slew his thousands, and David his ten thousands? Then, Achish called David, and said unto him, 
surely as the lord liveth thou hast been upright and thy going out and thy coming in with me in the host is good in my sight for i have not found evil in thee since the day of thy coming unto me unto this day nevertheless the lords favour thee not wherefore now return and go in peace that thou displease not the lords of the philistines and david said unto achish but what have i done and what hast thou found in thy servant so long as i have been with thee unto this day that i may not go fight against the enemies of my lord the king and achish answered and said to david i know that thou art good in my sight as an angel of god notwithstanding the princes of the philistines have said he shall not go up with us to the battle wherefore now rise up early in the morning with thy master's servants that are come with thee and as soon as ye be up early in the morning and have light depart so david and his men rose up early to depart in the morning to return into the land of the philistines and the philistines went up to jezreel chapter thirty and it came to pass when david and his men were come to ziklag on the third day that the amalekites had invaded the south and ziklag and smitten ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein they slew not any either great or small but carried them away and went on their way so david and his men came to the city and behold it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives then david and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep and david's two wives were taken captives ahinoam the jezreelitess and abigail the wife of nabal the carmelite and david was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters but david encouraged himself in the lord his god and david said unto abiathar the priest ahimelech's son i pray thee bring me hither the ephod and abiathar brought thither the ephod to david and david inquired at the lord saying shall i pursue after this troop shall i overtake them and he answered him pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all so david went he and the six hundred men that were with him and came to the brook besor where those that were left behind stayed but david pursued he and four hundred men for two hundred abode behind which were so faint that they could not go over the brook besor and they found an egyptian in the field and brought him to david and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water and they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins and when he had eaten his spirit came again to him for he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights and david said unto him to whom belongest thou and whence art thou and he said i am a young man of egypt servant to an amalekite 
and my master left me because three days agone I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of the Cherethites, and upon the coast which belongeth to Judah, and upon the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said unto him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me, nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this company. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing, because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines, and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them, from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day, and there escaped not a man of them, save four hundred young men, which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil, nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. And David took all the flocks and the herds which they drave before those other cattle, and said, This is David's spoil. And David came to the two hundred men, which were so faint that they could not follow David, whom they had made also to abide at the brook Besor. And they went forth to meet David, and to meet the people that were with him, and when David came near to the people, he saluted them. Then answered all the wicked men, and men of Belial, of those that went with David, and said, Because they went not with us, we will not give them aught of the spoil that we have recovered, save to every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away to depart. Then said David, Ye shall not do so, my brethren, with that which the Lord hath given us, and delivered the company that came against us into our hand. For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarrieth by the stuff. They shall part alike. And it was so from that day forward, that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. And when David came to Ziklag, he sent of the spoil unto the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, Behold, a present for you of the spoil of the enemies of the Lord, to them which were in Bethel, and to them which were in South Ramoth, and to them which were in Jatir, and to them which were in Eroer, and to them which were in Siphmoth, and to them which were in Eshtemua, and to them which were in Rechal, and to them which were in the cities of the Jeremelites, and to them which were in the cities of the Kenites, and to them which were in Horma, and to them which were in Choreshen, and to them which were in Athak, and to them which were in Hebron, and to all the places where David himself and his men were wont to hunt. Chapter 31 Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul, and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan, and Abinadab, and Melchishua, Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was sore wounded of the archers. Then said Saul unto his armor-bearer, 
draw thy sword, and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through, and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword, and fell upon it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword, and died with him. So Saul died, and his three sons, and his armor-bearer, and all his men, that same day, together. And when the men of Israel that were on the other side of the valley, and they that were on the other side Jordan, saw that the men of Israel fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook their cities and fled. And the Philistines came and dwelt in them. And it came to pass on the morrow, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his three sons fallen in Mount Gilboa. And they cut off his head, and stripped off his armor, and sent into the land of the Philistines round about, to publish it in the house of their idols, and among the people. And they put his armor in the house of Ashtaroth, and they fastened his body to the wall of Beth Shan. And when the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard of that which the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose, and went all night, and took the body of Saul, and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Bethshan, and came to Jabesh, and burnt them. They took their bones, and buried them under a tree at Jabesh, and fasted seven days. End of section 30Section 31 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Second Samuel, chapters 1 to 11. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta. Chapter 1. Now it came to pass, after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in Ziklag, it came even to pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul, with his clothes rent, and earth upon his head. And so it was, when he came to David, that he fell to the earth, and did obeisance. And David said unto him, From whence comest thou? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. And David said unto him, How went the matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered, That the people are fled from the battle, and many of the people also are fallen and dead. And Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. And David said unto the young man that told him, how knowest thou that Saul and Jonathan, his son, be dead? And the young man that told him said, As I happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me, and he called unto me, and I answered, Here am I. And he said unto me, Who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. And he said unto me again, Stand, I pray thee, upon me, and slay me, for anguish is come upon me, because my life is yet whole in me. So I stood upon him, and slew him because I was sure that he could not live after that he was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head, 
and the bracelet that was on his arm, and have brought them hither unto my lord. Then David took hold on his clothes, and rent them, and likewise all the men that were with him. And they mourned, and wept, and fasted until even, for Saul and for Jonathan his son, and for the people of the Lord, and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. And David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger, an Amalekite. And David said unto him, How wast thou not afraid to stretch forth thine hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? And David called one of the young men, and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died. And David said unto him, thy blood be upon thy head, for thy mouth hath testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. Also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of a bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher, the beauty of Israel is slain upon thy high places. How are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in Gath. Publish it not in the streets of Ascalon, lest the daughters of the Philistine rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Ye mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you nor fields of offerings, for there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away, the shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil, from the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely, and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet with other delights, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle, O oh, Jonathan, thou wast slain in thine high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How are the mighty fallen, and the weapons of war perished? Chapter 2 and it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go up? And he said, Unto Hebron. So David went up thither, and his two wives also, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, Nabal's wife, the Carmelite. And his men that were with him did David bring up, every man with his household, and they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying that the men of Jabesh-Gilead were they that buried Saul. And David sent messengers unto the men of Jabesh-Gilead, and said unto them, Blessed be ye of the Lord, that he have shewed this kindness unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him. 
and now the Lord shew kindness and truth unto you, and I also will requite you this kindness, because ye have done this thing. Therefore now let your hands be strengthened, and be ye valiant. For your master Saul is dead, and also the house of Judah have anointed me king over them. But Abner the son of Ner, captain of Saul's host, took Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim, and made him king over Gilead, and over the Asherites, and over Jezreel, and over Ephraim, and over Benjamin, and over all Israel. And Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel and reigned two years. But the house of Judah followed David. And the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. And Abner, the son of Ner, and the servants of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and the servants of David went out, and met together by the pool of Gibeon. And they sat down, the one on the one side of the pool, and the other on the other side of the pool. And Abner said to Joab, Let the young men now arise and play before us. And Joab said, Let them arise. Then there arose and went over, by number twelve of Benjamin, which pertained to Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and twelve of the servants of David. And they caught every one his fellow by the head, and thrust his sword in his fellow's side, so they fell down together. Wherefore that place was called Helkath Hazirum, which is in Gibeon. And there was a very sore battle that day, and Abner was beaten, and the men of Israel, before the servants of David. And there were three sons of Zeruiah there, Joab, and Abishai, and Asahel. And Asahel was as light of foot as a wild roe. And Asahel pursued after Abner, and in going he turned not to the right hand nor to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Art thou Asahel? And he answered, I am. And Abner said to him, Turn thee aside to thy right hand or to thy left, and lay thee hold on one of the young men, and take thee his armor. But Asahel would not turn aside from following of him. And Abner said again to Asahel, Turn thee aside from following me. Wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? How then should I hold up my face to Joab, thy brother? Howbeit he refused to turn aside. Wherefore Abner, with the hinder end of the spear, smote him under the fifth rib, that the spear came out behind him, and he fell down there, and died in the same place. And it came to pass, that as many as came to the place where Asahel fell down, and died, stood still. Joab also, and Abishai, pursued after Abner, and the sun went down when they were come to the hill of Amma, that lieth before Gia, by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. And the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together after Abner, and became one troop, and stood on the top of an hill. Then Abner called to Joab, and said, Shall the sword devour for ever? Knowest thou not that it will be bitterness in the latter end? For how long shall it be, then, ere thou bid the people return from following their brethren? 
and Joab said, As God liveth, unless thou hadst spoken, surely then in the morning the people had gone up every one from following his brother. So Joab blew a trumpet, and all the people stood still, and pursued after Israel no more, neither fought they any more. And Abner and his men walked all that night through the plain, and passed over Jordan, and went through all Bithron, and they came to Mahanaim. And Joab returned from following Abner, and when he had gathered all the people together, there lacked of David's servants nineteen men, and Asahel. But the servants of David had smitten of Benjamin, and of Abner's men, so that three hundred and threescore men died. And they took up Asahel, and buried him in the sepulchre of his father, which was in Bethlehem. And Joab and his men went all night, and they came to Hebron at break of day. Chapter 3 Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. And unto David were sons born in Hebron, and his firstborn was Amnon of Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and his second Chaleab of Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite, and the third Absalom the son of Mekah, the daughter of Talmai king of Jeshur, and the fourth Adonijah, the son of Haggith, and the fifth Shephatiah, the son of Abital, and the sixth Ithrium by Ekla, David's wife. These were born to David in Hebron. And it came to pass, while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul, and Saul had a concubine, whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah. And Ishbosheth said to Abner, Wherefore hast thou gone in unto my father's concubine? Then was Abner very wroth for the words of Ishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head, which against Judah do shew kindness this day unto the house of Saul, thy father, to his brethren, and to his friends, and have not delivered thee into the hand of David, that thou chargest me to-day with a fault concerning this woman? So do God to Abner, and more also, except, as the Lord hath sworn to David, even so I do to him, to translate the kingdom from the house of Saul, and to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. And he could not answer Abner a word again, because he feared him. And Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, Whose is the land? Saying also, Make thy league with me, and behold, my hand shall be with thee, to bring about all Israel unto thee. And he said, Well, I will make a league with thee, but one thing I require of thee, that is, thou shalt not see my face except Thou first bring my cow, Saul's daughter, when thou comest to see my face. And David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Deliver me my wife, my cow, 
which I espoused to me for an hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbosheth sent, and took her from her husband, even from Phaltiel, the son of Laish. And her husband went with her along, weeping behind her, to Bahurim. Then said Abner unto him, Go, return. And he returned. And Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, Ye sought for David in times past to be king over you. Now then do it, for the Lord hath spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines, and out of the hand of all their enemies. And Abner also spake in the ears of Benjamin. And Abner went also to speak in the ears of David in Hebron all that seemed good to Israel, and that seemed good to the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner came to David, to Hebron, and twenty men with him. And David made Abner and the men that were with him a feast. And Abner said unto David, I will arise and go, and will gather all Israel unto my lord the king, that they may make a league with thee, and that thou mayest reign over all that thine heart desireth. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. And, behold, the servants of David and Joab came from pursuing a troop, and brought in a great spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he was gone in peace. When Joab and all the host that was with him were come, they told Joab, saying, Abner, the son of Ner, came to the king, and he hath sent him away, and he is gone in peace. Then Joab came to the king, and said, What hast thou done? Behold, Abner came unto thee. Why is it that thou hast sent him away, and he is quite gone? Thou knowest, Abner, the son of Ner, that he came to deceive thee, and to know thy going out and thy coming in and to know all that thou doest. And when Joab was come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, which brought him again from the will of Sirah. But David knew it not. And when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly, and smote him there, under the fifth rib, that he died, for the blood of Asahel his brother. And afterward, when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord for ever from the blood of Abner the son of Ner. Let it rest on the head of Joab, and on all his father's house, and let there not fail from the house of Joab one that hath an issue, or that is a leper, or that leaneth on a staff, or that falleth on the sword, or that lacketh bread. So Joab and Abishai his brother slew Abner, because he had slain their brother Asahel at Gibeon in the battle. And David said to Joab, and to all the people that were with him. Rend your clothes, and gird you with sackcloth, and mourn before Abner. And King David himself followed the bier. And they buried Abner in Hebron. And the king lifted up his voice, and wept at the grave of Abner. And all the people wept.
and the king lamented over Abner, and said, Died Abner, as a fool dieth. Thy hands were not bound, nor thy feet put into fetters, as a man falleth before wicked men, so fellest thou. And all the people wept again over him. And when all the people came to cause David to eat meat while it was yet day, David sware, saying, So do God to me, and more also, if I taste bread, or aught else, till the sun be down. And all the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, as whatsoever the king did pleased all the people. For all the people and all Israel understood that day that it was not of the king to slay Abner the son of Ner. And the king said unto his servants, Know ye not that there is a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel, and I am this day weak, though anointed king? And these men, the sons of Zeruiah, be too hard for me. The Lord shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. Chapter 4 And when Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, his hands were feeble, and all the Israelites were troubled. And Saul's son had two men that were captains of bands. The name of the one was Bena, and the name of the other Rechab, the sons of Rimon, a Berothite, of the children of Benjamin, for Beroth also was reckoned to Benjamin, and the Berothites fled to Kittim, and were sojourners there until this day. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled, and it came to pass, as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. And the sons of Rimon the Berothite Recap and Bena went, and came about the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth, who lay on a bed at noon. And they came thither into the midst of the house, as though they would have fetched wheat. And they smote him under the fifth rib, and Recap and Bena, his brother, escaped. For when they came into the house, he lay on his bed in his bedchamber, and they smote him, and slew him, and beheaded him, and took his head, and got them away through the plain all night. And they brought the head of Ishbosheth unto David to Hebron, and said to the king, Behold, the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, thine enemy, which sought thy life. And the Lord hath avenged my lord, the king, this day of Saul and of his seed. And David answered Rechab and Bena, his brother, the sons of Rimon the Berothite, and said unto them, as the Lord liveth, who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversity. When one told me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good tidings, I took hold of him and slew him in Ziklag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings. How much more! when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house, upon his bed. 
shall i not therefore now require his blood of your hand and take you away from the earth and david commanded his young men and they slew them and cut off their hands and their feet and hanged them up over the pool in hebron but they took the head of ishbosheth and buried it in the sepulchre of abner in hebron chapter five then came all the tribes of israel to david unto hebron and spake saying behold we are thy bone and thy flesh also in time past when saul was king over us thou wast he that lettest out and broughtest in israel and the lord said to thee thou shalt feed my people israel and thou shalt be a captain over israel so all the elders of israel came to the king to hebron and king david made a league with them in hebron before the lord and they anointed david king over israel david was thirty years old when he began to reign and he reigned forty years in hebron he reigned over judah seven years and six months and in jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years over all israel and judah and the king and his men went to jerusalem unto the jebusites the inhabitants of the land which spake unto david saying except thou take away the blind and the lame thou shalt not come in hither thinking david cannot come in hither nevertheless david took the stronghold of zion the same is the city of david and david said on that day whosoever getteth up to the gutter and smiteth the jebusites and the lame and the blind that are hated of david's soul he shall be chief and captain wherefore they said the blind and the lame shall not come into the house so david dwelt in the fort and called it the city of david and david built round about from milo and inward and david went on and grew great and the lord god of hosts was with him and hiram king of tyre sent messengers to david and cedar trees and carpenters and masons and they built david an house and david perceived that the lord had established him king over israel and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people israel's sake and david took him more concubines and wives out of jerusalem after he was come from hebron and there were yet sons and daughters born to david and these be the names of those that were born unto him in Jerusalem, Shammua, and Shobab, and Nathan, and Solomon, Ibar also, and Elishua, and Nepheg, and Japhia, and Elishima, and Eliada, and Eliphalet. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the philistines came up to seek david and david heard of it and went down to the hold the philistines also came up and spread themselves in the valley of rephaim and david inquired of the lord saying shall i go up to the philistines wilt thou deliver them into mine hand and the lord said unto david go up i will doubtless deliver the philistines into thine hand 
and David came to Balperism, and David smote them there, and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me, as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Balperism. And there they left their images, and David and his men burned them. And the Philistines came up yet again, and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees, and let it be, when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so, as the Lord had commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gezer. Chapter 6 Again David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand. And David arose, and went with all the people that were with him, from Bali of Judah, to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, that was in Gibeah, and Uzzah, and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps, and on psalteries, and on timbrels, and on cornets, and on cymbals. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God, and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah. And God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased, because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah, to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day, and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obedidim the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Abedidim the Gittite three months. And the Lord blessed Obedidim and all his household. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obedidim and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of God. So, David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedidim into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod, so David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord, with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, 
looked through a window and saw king david leaping and dancing before the lord and she despised him in her heart and they brought in the ark of the lord and set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that david had pitched for it and david offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the lord and as soon as david had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings he blessed the people in the name of the lord of hosts and he dealt among all the people even among the whole multitude of israel as well to the women as men to every one a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine so all the people departed every one to his house then david returned to bless his household and michal the daughter of saul came out to meet david and said how glorious was the king of israel to-day who uncovered himself to-day in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncover himself and david said unto michal it was before the lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the lord over israel therefore will i play before the lord and i will yet be more vile than thus and will be base in mine own sight and of the maid-servant which thou hast spoken of of them shall i be had in honour therefore michal the daughter of saul had no child unto the day of her death chapter seven and it came to pass when the king sat in his house and the lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies that the king said unto nathan the prophet see now i dwell in an house of cedar but the ark of god dwelleth within curtains and nathan said to the king go do all that is in thine heart for the lord is with thee and it came to pass that night that the word of the lord came unto nathan saying go and tell my servant david thus saith the lord shalt thou build me an house for me to dwell in whereas i have not dwelt in any house since the time that i brought up the children of israel out of egypt even to this day but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle in all the places wherein i have walked with all the children of israel spake i a word with any of the tribes of israel whom i commanded to feed my people israel saying why build ye not me an house of cedar now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant david thus saith the lord of hosts i took thee from the sheep coat from following the sheep to be ruler over my people over israel and i was with thee whithersoever thou wentest and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight and have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth moreover i will appoint a place for my people israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time and as since the time that i commanded judges to be over my people israel that have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies also the lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house 
and when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers i will set up thy seed after thee which shall proceed out of my bowels and i will establish his kingdom he shall build an house for my name and i will establish the throne of his kingdom for ever and i will be his father and he shall be my son if he commit iniquity i will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men but my mercy shall not depart away from him as i took it from saul whom i put away before thee and thine house and thy kingdom shall be established for ever before thee thy throne shall be established for ever according to all these words and according to all this vision so did nathan speak unto david then went king david in and sat before the lord and he said who am i o lord god and what is my house that thou hast brought me hitherto and this was yet a, a small thing in thy sight o lord god but thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come and this is the manner of man o lord god and what can david say more unto thee for thou lord god knowest thy servant for thy words sake and according to thine own heart hast thou done all these great things to make thy servant know them wherefore thou art great o lord god for there is none like thee neither is there any god beside thee according to all that we have heard with our ears and what one nation in the earth is like thy people even like israel whom god went to redeem for a people to himself and to make him a name and to do for you great things and terrible for thy land before thy people which thou redeemest to thee from egypt from the nations and their gods for thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people israel to be a people unto thee for ever and thou lord art become their god and now o lord god the words that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house establish it for ever and do as thou hast said and let thy name be magnified for ever saying the lord of hosts is the god over israel and let the house of thy servant david be established before thee for thou o lord of hosts god of israel hast revealed to thy servant saying i will build thee an house therefore hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee and now o lord god thou art that god and thy words be true and thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant therefore now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant that it may continue for ever before thee for thou o lord god hast spoken it and with thy blessing let the house of thy servant be blessed for ever chapter eight and after this it came to pass that david smote the philistines and subdued them and david took methgema out of the hand of the philistines and he smote moab 
and measured them with a line, casting them down to the ground. Even with two lines measured, he put to death, and with one full line to keep alive. And so the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. David smote also Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zoba, as he went to recover his border at the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand chariots and seven hundred horsemen and twenty thousand footmen. And David huffed all the chariot horses, but reserved of them for an hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to Succor Hadadezer, king of Zopah, David slew of the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David, and brought gifts. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadadezer, and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Beta and from Barothai, cities of Hadadezer, King David took exceeding much brass. When Toai, king of Hamath, heard that David had smitten all the host of Hadadezer, then Toai sent Joram, his son, unto King David, to salute him and to bless him, because he had fought against Hadadezer and smitten him, for Hadadezer had wars with Toai. And Joram brought with him vessels of silver, and vessels of gold, and vessels of brass, which also King David did dedicate unto the Lord, with the silver and gold that he had dedicated of all nations which he subdued, of Syria, and of Moab, and of the children of Ammon, and of the Philistines, and of Amalek, and of the spoil of Hadadezer, son of Rehob, king of Zobah. And David got him a name when he returned from smiting of the Syrians in the Valley of Salt, being eighteen thousand men. And he put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom he put garrisons, and all they of Edom became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And David reigned over all Israel. And David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. And Joab the son of Zeruiah was over the host. And Jehoshaphat the son of Elihud was recorder. And Zadok the son of Ahitub and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar were the priests, and Sariah was the scribe, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over both the Cherethites and the Pelethites, and David's sons were chief rulers. Chapter 9 And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul? that I may shew him kindness for Jonathan's sake. And there was of the house of Saul a servant, whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul? that I may shew the kindness of God unto him. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodibar. 
Now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely shew thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself, and said, What is thy servant, that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained to Saul, and to all his house. Thou, therefore, and thy sons, and thy servants, shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits, that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread alway at my table. Now, Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son, whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table, and was lame on both his feet. Chapter 10 And it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died, and Hanun his son reigned in his stead. Then said David, I will shew kindness unto Hanun the son of Nahash, as his father shewed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanun their lord, Thinkest thou that David doth honour thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Hath not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city, and to spy it out, and to overthrow it? Wherefore Hanun took David's servants, and shaved off the one half of their beards, and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they stank before David, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Bethrehob and the Syrians of Zobah, twenty thousand footmen, and of King Mecha a thousand men, and of Ishtab twelve thousand men. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the host of the mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array at the entering in of the gate, and the Syrians of Zobah and of Rehob and Ishtab and Mecha were by themselves in the field. When Joab saw that the front of the battle was against him before and behind, he chose of all the choice men of Israel, and put them in array against the Syrians. 
and the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abishai, his brother, that he might put them in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. Be of good courage, and let us play the men for our people, and for the cities of our God, and the Lord do that which seemeth him good. And Joab drew nigh, and the people that were with him, unto the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, then fled they also before Abishai, and entered into the city. So Joab returned from the children of Ammon, and came to Jerusalem. And when the Syrians saw that they were smitten before Israel, they gathered themselves together, and Hadarezer sent and brought out the Syrians that were beyond the river, and they came to Helam. And Shobak, the captain of the host of Hadarezer, went before them. And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together, and passed over Jordan, and came to Helam. And the Syrians set themselves in array against David, and fought with him. And the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men of seven hundred chariots of the Syrians, and forty thousand horsemen, and smote Shobak, the captain of their host, who died there. And when all the kings that were servants to Hadarezer saw that they were smitten before Israel, they made peace with Israel, and served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon any more. Chapter 11 And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Reba. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide, that David arose from off his bed, and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house, and the woman conceived, and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house, and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? 
and Uriah said unto David, The ark, and Israel, and Judah, abide in tents, and my lord Joab, and the servants of my lord, are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house, to eat and drink, and to lie with my wife? As thou livest, and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here to-day also, and to-morrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day, and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his lord, but went not down to his house. And it came to pass, in the morning, that David wrote a letter to Joab, and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten, and die. And it came to pass, when Joab observed the city, that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, and charged the messengers, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war unto the king, and if so be that the king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, Wherefore approached ye so nigh unto the city when ye did fight? Knew ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Abimelech, the son of Jerubasheth? Did not a woman cast a piece of a millstone upon him from the wall, that he died in Thebes? Why went ye nigh the wall? Then say thou, Thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger went, and came and shewed David all that Joab had sent him for. And the messenger said unto David, Surely the men prevailed against us, and came out unto us into the field, and we were upon them, even unto the entering of the gate. And the suitors shut from off the wall upon thy servants, and some of the king's servants be dead, and thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoureth the one as well as another. Make thy battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife, and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. End of section 31 Section 32 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version Second Samuel, chapters 12 to 18 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta Chapter 12 And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him, and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich, and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, 
which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him, and with his children. It did eat of his own meat, and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveller unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock, and of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb, and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee thy master's house, and thy master's wives unto thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel, and of Judah, and if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord, to do evil in his sight. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou didst it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. How be it, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted, and went in, and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose, and went to him, to raise him up from the earth. But he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass, on the seventh day, that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? When David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth, and washed, and anointed himself, and changed his apparel, and came into the house of the Lord, and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. 
then said his servants unto him what thing is this that thou hast done thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive but when the child was dead thou didst rise and eat bread and he said while the child was yet alive i fasted and wept for i said who can tell whether god will be gracious to me that the child may live but now he is dead wherefore should i fast can i bring him back again i shall go to him but he shall not return to me and david comforted bathsheba his wife and went in unto her and lay with her and she bare a son and he called his name solomon and the lord loved him and he sent by the hand of nathan the prophet and he called his name jedidiah because of the lord and joab fought against reba of the children of ammon and took the royal city and joab sent messengers to david and said i have fought against reba and have taken the city of waters now therefore gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and take it lest i take the city and it be called after my name and david gathered all the people together and went to reba and fought against it and took it and he took their king's crown from off his head the weight whereof was a talent of gold with the precious stones and it was set on david's head and he brought forth the spoil of the city in great abundance and he brought forth the people that were therein and put them under saws and under harrows of iron and under axes of iron and made them pass through the brick kiln and thus did he unto all the cities of the children of ammon so david and all the people returned unto jerusalem chapter thirteen and it came to pass after this that absalom the son of david had a fair sister whose name was tamar and amnon the son of david loved her and amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister tamar for she was a virgin and amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her but amnon had a friend whose name was jonadab the son of shemia david's brother and jonadab was a very subtle man and he said unto him why art thou being the king's son lean from day to day wilt thou not tell me and amnon said unto him i love tamar my brother absalom's sister and jonadab said unto him lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick and when thy father cometh to see thee say unto him i pray thee let my sister tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that i may see it and eat it at her hand so amnon lay down and made himself sick and when the king was come to see him amnon said unto the king i pray thee let tamar my sister come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight that i may eat at her hand then david sent home to tamar saying go now to thy brother amnon's house and dress him meat so tamar went to her brother amnon's house and he was laid down and she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and did bake the cakes and she took a pan and poured them out before him but 
he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Have out all men from me. Then they went out every man from him. And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made, and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her, and said unto her, Come, lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice, but, being stronger than she, forced her, and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him, and said, Put now this woman out from me, and bolt the door after her. And she had a garment of diverse colours upon her, for with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. Then his servant brought her out, and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head, and rent her garment of diverse colours that was on her, and laid her hand on her head, and went on crying. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Amnon, thy brother, been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard all of these things, he was very wroth. And Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon, because he had forced his sister Tamar. And it came to pass, after two full years, that Absalom had sheep shearers in Balhazor, which is beside Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold, now, thy servant hath sheep shearers. Let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants, go with thy servant. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all now go, lest we be chargeable unto thee. And he pressed him, howbeit he would not go, but blessed him. Then said Absalom, If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with thee? But Absalom pressed him, that he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Mark ye now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, Smite Amnon, then kill him. Fear not, have not I commanded you. Be courageous, and be valiant. 
and the servants of Absalom did unto Amnon, as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and every man gat him up upon his mule, and fled. And it came to pass, while they were in the way, that tidings came to David, saying, Absalom hath slain all the king's sons, and there is not one of them left. Then the king arose, and tare his garments, and lay on the earth, and all his servants stood by with their clothes rent. And Jonadab, the son of Shemiah, David's brother, answered and said, let not my lord suppose that they have slain all the young men, the king's sons. For Amnon only is dead. For by the appointment of Absalom, this hath been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. Now, therefore, let not my lord, the king, take the thing to his heart, to think that all the king's sons are dead. For Amnon only is dead. But Absalom fled, and the young man that kept the watch lifted up his eyes, and looked, and, behold, there came much people by the way of the hillside behind him. And Jonadab said unto the king, Behold, the king's sons come, as thy servant said, so it is. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of speaking, that, behold, the king's sons came, and lifted up their voice, and wept, and the king also, and all his servants wept very sore. But Absalom fled, and went to Talmai, the son of Amihud, the king of Jeshur. And David mourned for his son every day. So Absalom fled and went to Jeshur, and was there three years. And the soul of King David longed to go forth unto Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Absalom, seeing he was dead. Chapter 14 Now Joab, the son of Zeruiah, perceived that the king's heart was toward Absalom. And Joab sent to Tekoa, and fetched thence a wise woman, and said unto her, I pray thee, feign thyself to be a mourner, and put on now mourning apparel, and anoint not thyself with oil, but be as a woman that had a long time mourned for the dead and come to the king, and speak on this manner unto him. So Joab put the words in her mouth. And when the woman of Tekoa spake to the king, she fell on her face to the ground, and did obeisance, and said, Help, O king! And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, I am indeed a widow woman, and mine husband is dead, and thy handmaid had two sons, and they strove together in the field, and there was none to part them, but the one smote the other, and slew him, and behold, the whole family is risen against thine handmaid, and they said, Deliver him that smote his brother, that we may kill him, for the life of his brother whom he slew and we will destroy the air also. And so they shall quench my coal, which is left, and shall not leave to my husband neither name nor remainder upon the earth. And the king said unto the woman, Go to thine house, and I will give charge concerning thee. And the woman of Tekoa said unto the king, My lord, O king, the iniquity be on me, and on my father's house, and the king and his throne be guiltless. And the king said, Whosoever saith aught unto thee, 
bring him to me. He shall not touch thee any more. Then said she, I pray thee, let the king remember the Lord thy God, that thou wouldest not suffer the revengers of blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. And he said, As the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of thy son fall to the earth. Then the woman said, Let thine handmaid, I pray thee, let the king remember the Lord thy God, that thou wouldest not suffer the revengers of blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. And he said, As the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of thy son fall to the earth. Then the woman said, Let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak one word unto my lord the king. And he said, Say on. And the woman said, Wherefore then hast thou thought such a thing against the people of God? For the king doth speak this thing as one which is faulty, and that the king doth not fetch home again is banished. For we needs must die, and are as water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Neither doth God respect any person, yet doth he devise means that his banished be not expelled from him. Now, therefore, that I am come to speak of this thing unto my lord the king, it is because the people have made me afraid. And thy handmaid said, I will now speak unto the king. It may be that the king will perform the request of his handmaid. For the king will hear to deliver his handmaid out of the hand of the man that would destroy me, and my son together out of the inheritance of God. Then thine handmaid said, The word of my lord the king shall now be comfortable, for as an angel of God, so is my lord the king to discern good and bad. Therefore the Lord thy God will be with thee. Then the king answered and said unto the woman, Hide not from me, I pray thee, the thing that I shall ask thee. And the woman said, Let my lord the king now speak. And the king said, is not the hand of Joab with thee in all this? And the woman answered and said, As thy soul liveth, my lord the king, none can turn to the right hand or to the left from aught that my lord the king hath spoken. For thy servant Joab, he bade me, and he put all these words in the mouth of thine handmaid, to fetch about this form of speech hath thy servant Joab done this thing. And my lord is wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of God, to know all things that are in the earth. And the king said unto Joab, Behold, now I have done this thing. Go, therefore, bring the young man Absalom again. And Joab fell to the ground on his face, and bowed himself, and thanked the king. And Joab said, Today thy servant knoweth that I have found grace in thy sight, my lord, O king, in that the king hath fulfilled the request of his servant. So Joab arose, and went to Cheshire, and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. And the king said, Let him turn to his own house, and let him not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house, and saw not the king's face. But in all Israel there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty. From the sole of his foot, even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. And when he polled his head, for it was at every year's end that he polled it, 
because the hair was heavy on him, therefore he pulled it. He weighed the hair of his head at two hundred shekels after the king's weight. And unto Absalom there were born three sons and one daughter, whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of a fair countenance. So Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem, and saw not the king's face. Therefore Absalom sent for Joab, to have sent him to the king. But he would not come to him, and when he sent again the second time, he would not come. Therefore he said unto his servants, See, Joab's field is near mine, and he hath barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Then Joab arose, and came to Absalom, unto his house, and said unto him, Wherefore hath thy servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Joab, Behold, I sent unto thee, saying, Come hither, that I may send thee to the king, to say, Wherefore am I come from Jeshur? It had been good for me to have been there still. Now therefore let me see the king's face, and if there be any iniquity in me, let him kill me. So Joab came to the king, and told him. And when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king, and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king. And the king kissed Absalom. Chapter 15 And it came to pass, after this, that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses, and fifty men to run before him. And Absalom rose up early, and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so, that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him, and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right, but there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Absalom said, Moreover, O oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. And it was so, that when any man came nigh to him, to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand, and took him, and kissed him. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And it came to pass, after forty years, that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. For thy servant vowed a vow while I abode in Jeshur in Syria, saying, If the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then will I serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as ye hear the sound of the trumpet, then ye shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. And with Absalom went two hundred men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they went in their simplicity and they knew not anything. And Absalom sent for Ahitophel, the Gilonite, David's counsellor, from his city, 
even from Gilo, where he offered sacrifices, and the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually with Absalom. And there came a messenger to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly, and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth, and all his household after him. And the king left ten women, which were concubines, to keep the house. And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him, and all the Cherethites, and all the Pelethites, and all the Gittites, six hundred men which came after him from Gath, passed on before the king. Then said the king to Etai the Gittite, Wherefore goest thou with us? Return to thy place, and abide with the king. For thou art a stranger, and also an exile, whereas thou camest but yesterday. Should I this day make thee go up and down with us? Seeing I go whither I may, return thou, and take back thy brethren. Mercy and truth be with thee. And Etai answered the king, As the Lord liveth, and as my lord the king liveth, surely in what place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also will thy servant be. And David said to Etai, Go, and pass over. And Etai the Gittite passed over, and all his men, and all the little ones that were with him. And all the country wept with a loud voice. And all the people passed over. The king also passed over the brook Kidron. And all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. And, lo, Zadok also, and all the Levites were with him bearing the Ark of the Covenant of God. And they set down the Ark of God. And Abiathar went up, until all the people had done passing out of the city. Then the king said unto Zadok, Carry back the Ark of God into the city. If I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me again, and shew me both it and his habitation. But if he thus say, I have no delight in thee, behold, here am I, let him do to me as seemeth good unto him. The king said also unto Zadok the priest, Art not thou a seer? Return into the city in peace, and your two sons with you, Ahimaz thy son, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. See, I will tarry in the plain of the wilderness, until there come word from you to certify me. Zadok, therefore, and Abiathar, carried the ark of God again to Jerusalem, and they tarried there. And David went up by the ascent of Mount Olivet, and wept as he went up, and had his head covered. And he went barefoot, and all the people that was with him covered every man his head. And they went up, weeping as they went up. And one told David, saying, Ahitophel, 
is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahitophel into foolishness, and it came to pass that when david was come to the top of the mount where he worshipped god behold hushai the archite came to meet him with his clothes rent and earth upon his head unto whom david said if thou passest on with me then thou shalt be a burden unto me but if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant hitherto, so will I now also be thy servant. Then mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahitophel. And hast thou not there with thee Zadok and Abiathar, the priests? Therefore, it shall be that what thing soever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abiathar, the priests. Therefore they have there with them their two sons, Ahimaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them ye shall send unto me everything that ye can hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Chapter 16 And when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him, with a couple of asses saddled, and upon them two hundred loaves of bread, and an hundred bunches of raisins, and an hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, What meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, The asses be for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine that such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, And where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem. For he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine are all that pertained unto Mephibosheth. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. And when King David came to Bahiram, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shime, the son of Gera. He came forth, and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at David, and at all the servants of King David, and all the people, and all the mighty men, were on his right hand, and on his left. And thus said Shimei, when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of Belial. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, what have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah? So let him curse, because the Lord hath said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai, and to all his servants, 
Behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone, and let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction, and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along on the hill's side over against them, and cursed as he went, and threw stones at him, and cast dust. And Absalom, and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahitophel with him. And it came to pass, when Hushai, the archite, David's friend, was come unto Absalom, that Hushai said unto Absalom, God save the king, God save the king. And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this thy kindness to thy friend? Why wentest thou not with thy friend? And Hushai said unto Absalom, Nay, but whom the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel choose, his will I be, and with him will I abide. And again, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son, as I have served in thy father's presence, so will I be in thy presence? Then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Give counsel among you what we shall do. And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubines, which he hath left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou art abhorred of thy father. Then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. Chapter 17 Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out twelve thousand men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night, and I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed, and will make him afraid, and all the people that are with him shall flee, and I will smite the king only, and I will bring back all the people unto thee. The man whom thou seekest is as if all returned, so all the people shall be in peace. And the saying pleased Absalom well, and all the elders of Israel. Then said Absalom, Call now Hushai the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he saith. And when Hushai was come to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahithophel hath spoken after this manner. Shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. And Hushai said unto Absalom, The counsel that Ahithophel hath given is not good at this time. For, said Hushai, Thou knowest to thy father and his men that they be mighty men, and they be chafed in their minds as a bear robbed of her whelps in the field. And thy father is a man of war, and will not lodge with the people. Behold, he is hid now in some pit, or in some other place, and it will come to pass, when some of them be overthrown at the first, that whosoever heareth it will say, there is a slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. And he also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, 
shall utterly melt for all israel knoweth that thy father is a mighty man and they which be with him are valiant men therefore i counsel that all israel be generally gathered unto thee from dan even to beersheba as the sand that is by the sea for multitude and that thou go to battle in thine own person so shall we come upon him in some place where he shall be found and we will light upon him as the dew falleth on the ground and of him and of all the men that are with him there shall not be left so much as one moreover if he be gotten into a city then shall all israel bring ropes to that city and we will draw it into the river until there be not one small stone found and absalom and all the men of israel said the counsel of hushai the archite is better than the counsel of ahitophel for the lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of ahitophel to the intent that the lord might bring evil upon absalom then said hushai unto zadok and to abiathar the priests thus said thus did ahitophel counsel absalom and all the elders of israel and thus and thus have i counselled now therefore send quickly and tell david saying lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness but speedily pass over lest the king be swallowed up and all the people that are with him now jonathan and ahimaz stayed by enrogel for they might not be seen to come into the city and a wench went and told them and they went and told king david nevertheless a lad saw them and told absalom but they went both of them away quickly and came to a man's house in bahurim which had a well in his court whither they went down and the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground corn thereon and the thing was not known and when absalom's servants came to the woman to the house they said where is ahimaz and jonathan and the woman said unto them they be gone over the brook of water and when they had sought and could not find them they returned to jerusalem and it came to pass after they were departed that they came up out of the well and went and told king david and said unto david arise and pass quickly over the water for thus hath ahitophel counselled against you then david arose and all the people that were with him and they passed over jordan by the morning light there lacked not one of them that was not gone over jordan and when ahitophel saw that his counsel was not followed he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house to his city and put his household in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulchre of his father then david came to mahanaim and absalom passed over jordan he and all the men of israel with him and absalom made amasa captain of the host instead of joab which amasa was a man's son whose name was ithra an israelite that went in to abigail the daughter of nahash sister to zeruiah joab's mother so israel and absalom pitched in the land of gilead
and it came to pass when david was come to mahanaim that shobai the wife of nahash of reba of the children of ammon and makir the son of amiel of lodibar and barzillai the gileadite of rogelim brought beds and basins and earthen vessels and wheat and barley and flour and parched corn and beans and lentils and parched pulse and honey and butter and sheep and cheese of kine for david and for the people that were with him to eat for they said the people is hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness chapter eighteen and david numbered the people that were with him and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them and david sent forth a third part of the people under the hand of joab and a third part under the hand of abishai the son of zeruiah joab's brother and a third part under the hand of etai the gittite and the king said unto the people i will surely go forth with you myself also but the people answered thou shalt not go forth for if we flee away they will not care for us neither if half of us die will they care for us but now thou art worth ten thousand of us therefore now it is better that thou succour us out of the city and the king said unto them what seemeth you best i will do and the king stood by the gate side and all the people came out by hundreds and by thousands and the king commanded joab and abishai and etai saying deal gently for my sake with the young men even with absalom and all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning absalom so the people went out into the field against israel and the battle was in the wood of ephraim where the people of israel were slain before the servants of david and there was there a great slaughter that day of twenty thousand men for the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country and the wood devoured more people that day than the sword devoured and absalom met the servants of david and absalom rode upon a mule and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak and his head caught hold of the oak and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth and the mule that was under him went away and a certain man saw it and told joab and said behold i saw absalom hanged in an oak and joab said unto the man that told him and behold thou sawest him and why didst thou not smite him there to the ground and i would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle and the man said unto joab though i should receive a thousand shekels of silver in mine hand yet would i not put forth mine hand against the king's son for in our hearing the king charged thee and abishai and etai saying beware that none touch the young man absalom otherwise i should have wrought falsehood against mine own life for there is no matter hid from the king and thou thyself wouldst have set thyself against me then said joab i may not tarry thus with thee and he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak and ten young men that bare joab's armour compassed about and smote absalom and slew him and joab blew the trumpet and the people returned from pursuing after israel 
for Joab held back the people. And they took Absalom, and cast him into a great pit in the wood, and laid a very great heap of stones upon him. And all Israel fled, every one to his tent. Now Absalom, in his lifetime, had taken and reared up for himself a pillar, which is in the king's dale. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name, and it is called unto this day Absalom's place. Then said Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, Let me now run and bear the king tidings, how that the Lord hath avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said unto him, Thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day. But this day thou shalt bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. Then said Joab to Cushai, Go tell the king what thou hast seen. And Cushai bowed himself unto Joab, and ran. Then said Ahimaaz the son of Zadok, yet again to Joab, But howsoever, let me, I pray thee, also run after Cushai. And Joab said, Wherefore wilt thou run, my son, seeing that thou hast no tidings ready? But howsoever, said he, let me run. And he said unto him, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by the way of the plain, and overran Cushai. And David sat between the two gates. And the watchman went up to the roof over the gate, unto the wall, and lifted up his eyes, and looked, and, behold, a man running alone. And the watchman cried and told the king. And the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. And he came apace and drew near. And the watchman saw another man running. And the watchman called unto the porter and said, Behold, another man is running alone. And the king said, He also bringeth tidings. And the watchman said, Methinketh the running of the foremost is like the running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man, and cometh with good tidings. And Ahimaaz called and said unto the king, All is well. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king, and said, Blessed be the Lord thy God, which hath delivered up the men that lifted up their hand against my lord, the king. And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahimaaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant, and me thy servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. And the king said unto him, Turn aside and stand here. And he turned aside and stood still. And behold, Cushai came. And Cushai said, Tidings, my lord the king, for the lord hath avenged thee this day of all of them that rose up against thee. And the king said unto Cushai, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushai answered, The enemies of my lord, the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as that young man is. And the king was much moved, and went up to the chamber over the gate, and wept. And as he went, thus he said, O oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, would God I had died for thee, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. 
End of section 32. Section 33 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Second Samuel, chapters 19 to 24. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta. Chapter 19. And it was told Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. And the people got them by stealth that day into the city, as people being ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. But the king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O oh, my son, Absalom! O oh, Absalom, my son, my son! And Joab came into the house to the king, and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, which this day have saved thy life, and the lives of thy sons, and of thy daughters, and the lives of thy wives, and the lives of thy concubines, in that thou lovest thine enemies, and hatest thy friends. For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants. For this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived, and all we had died this day, then it had pleased thee well. Therefore arise, go forth, and speak comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night, and that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from thy youth until now. Then the king arose and sat in the gate. And they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king doth sit in the gate. And all the people came before the king, for Israel had fled every man to his tent. And all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king saved us out of the hand of our enemies, and he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines. And now he is fled out of the land for Absalom. And Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now, therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing the king back? And King David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house, seeing the speech of all Israel is come to the king, even to his house. Ye are my brethren, ye are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore then are ye the last to bring back the king? And say ye to Amasa, Art thou not of my bone and of my flesh? God do so to me, if thou be not captain of the host before me, continually in the room of Joab. And he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word unto the king, Return thou, and all thy servants. So the king returned, and came to Jordan. And Judah came to Gilgal, to go meet the king, to conduct the king over Jordan. And Shemai, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, which was of Bahurim, hasted and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. I am this day fourscore years old, and can I discern between good and evil? 
Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Wherefore, then, should thy servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king? Thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king. And why should the king recompense it me with such a reward? Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again, that I may die in mine own city, and be buried by the grave of my father and of my mother. But behold, thy servant Chimham, let him go over with my lord the king, and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. And the king answered, Chimham shall go over with me, and I will do to him that which shall seem good unto thee, and whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. And all the people went over Jordan. And when the king was come over, the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned unto his own place. Then the king went on to Gilgal, and Chimham went on with him. And all the people of Judah conducted the king, and also half the people of Israel. And behold, all the men of Israel came to the king, and said unto the king, Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen thee away, and have brought the king and his household, and all David's men with him, over Jordan? And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, because the king is near of kin to us. Wherefore then be ye angry for this matter? Have we eaten at all of the king's cost? Or hath he given us any gift? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, and said, We have ten parts in the king, and we have also more right in David than ye. Why then did ye despise us, that our advice should not be first had in bringing back our king? And the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. Chapter 20 And there happened to be there a man of Belial, whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet, and said, We have no part in David, neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tents, O Israel. So every man of Israel went up from after David, and followed Sheba, the son of Bichri. But the men of Judah clave unto their king from Jordan even to Jerusalem. And David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, and put them in ward, and fed them, but went not in unto them. So they were shut up unto the day of their death, living in widowhood. Then said the king to Amasa, Assemble me the men of Judah within three days, and be thou here present. So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he tarried longer than the set time which he had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, now shall Sheba, the son of Bichri, do us more harm than did Absalom. Take thou thy lord's servants, and pursue after him, lest he get him fenced cities, and escape us. And there went out after him Joab's men, and the Cherethites, and the Pelethites, and all the mighty men. And they went out of Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba, the son of Bichri. When they were at the great stone, which is in Gibeon, Amasa went before them. And 
Joab's garment that he had put on was girded unto him, and upon it a girdle with a sword fastened upon his loins in the sheaf thereof. And as he went forth it fell out. And Joab said to Amasa, Art thou in health, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with the right hand to kiss him, but Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. So he smote him therewith in the fifth rib, and shed out his bowels to the ground, and struck him not again, and he died. So Joab and Abishai his brother pursued after Sheba the son of Bichri. And one of Joab's men stood by him, and said, he that favoureth Joab, and he that is for David, let him go after Joab. And Amasa wallowed in blood in the midst of the highway. And when the man saw that all the people stood still, he removed Amasa out of the highway into the field, and cast a cloth upon him, when he saw that every one that came by him stood still. When he was removed out of the highway, all the people went on after Joab to pursue after Sheba, the son of Bichri. And he went through all the tribes of Israel, unto Abel, and to beth Mecha, and all the Barites, and they were gathered together, and went also after him. And they came and besieged him in Abel of beth Mecha and they cast up a bank against the city, and it stood in the trench, and all the people that were with Joab battered the wall to throw it down. Then cried a wise woman out of the city, Hear, hear, say, I pray you, unto Joab, Come near hither that I may speak with thee. And when he was come near unto her, the woman said, Art thou Joab? And he answered, I am he. Then she said unto him, Hear the words of thine handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. Then she spake, saying, They were wont to speak in old time, saying, They shall surely ask counsel at Abel. And so they ended the matter. I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why wilt thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? And Joab answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. The matter is not so, but a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba, the son of Bichri by name, hath lifted up his hand against the king, even against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said unto Joab, Behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. Then the woman went unto all the people, in her wisdom. And they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri, and cast it out to Joab. And he blew a trumpet. And they retired from the city, every man to his tent. And Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king. Now Joab was over all the host of Israel, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the Cherethites and over the Pelethites, and Adoram was over the tribute, and Jehoshaphat the son of Ahilud was recorder, and Shiva was scribe, and Zadok and Abiathar were the priests, and Ira also the Jerite was a chief ruler about David. Chapter 21 
then there was a famine in the days of david three years year after year and david inquired of the lord and the lord answered it is for saul and for his bloody house because he slew the gibeonites and the king called the gibeonites and said unto them now the gibeonites were not of the children of israel but of the remnant of the amorites and the children of israel had sworn unto them and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement, that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul, not of his house. Neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say, that will I do for you. And they answered the king, The man that consumed us, and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts of Israel, let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. But the king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Ea, whom she bare unto Saul, Harmoni and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Michal, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Mahalathite. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites and they hanged them in the hill before the Lord. And they fell, all seven, together, and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest. And Rizpah, the daughter of Ea, took sackcloth, and spread it for her upon the rock, from the beginning of harvest, until water dropped upon them out of heaven, and suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. And it was told David what Rizpah, the daughter of Ea, the concubine of Saul, had done. And David went and took the bones of Saul, and the bones of Jonathan his son, from the men of Jabesh-Gilead, which had stolen them from the street of Bethshan, where the Philistines had hanged them, when the Philistines had slain Saul in Gilboa. And he brought up from thence the bones of Saul, and he brought up from thence the bones of Saul, and the bones of Jonathan his son. And they gathered the bones of them that were hanged, and the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son buried they in the country of Benjamin and Zelah, in the sepulchre of Kish his father. And they performed all that the king commanded. And after that God was entreated for the land. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. And David went down, and his servants with him, and fought against the Philistines. And David waxed faint. And Ishbibinab, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed three hundred shekels of brass in weight, he, being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, succored him, and smote the Philistine, 
and killed him. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to the battle, but thou quench not the light of Israel. And it came to pass, after this, that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibachai the Hushathite slew Saph, which was of the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan the son of Jeroregim, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature, that had on every hand six fingers, and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shemiah, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath, and fell by the hand of David, and by the hand of his servants. Chapter 22 And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies, and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock, and my fortress, and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield, and the horn of my salvation my high tower, and my refuge, my saviour. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. When the waves of death compassed me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and cried to my God, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled, the foundations of heaven moved and shook, because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet, and he rode upon a cherub, and did fly, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind, and he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters, and thick clouds of the skies. Through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, and he sent out arrows, and scattered them, lightning and discomfited them. And the channels of the sea appeared, the foundations of the world were discovered, at the rebuking of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them that hated me for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me 
according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I was also upright before him, and have kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore the Lord hath recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his eyesight. With the merciful thou wilt shew thyself merciful, and with the upright man thou wilt shew thyself upright. With the pure thou wilt shew thyself pure, and with the froward thou wilt shew thyself unsavoury. And the afflicted people thou wilt save, but thine eyes are upon the haughty, that thou mayest bring them down. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness, for by thee I have run through a troop, by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God, save the Lord? And who is a rock, save our God? God is my strength and power and he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds' feet, and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies, and destroyed them, and turned not again until I had consumed them. And I have consumed them, and wounded them, so they could not arise. Yea, they are fallen under my feet, for thou hast girded me with strength to battle. Them that rose up against me hast thou subdued under me. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They looked, but there was none to save, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them, as small as the dust of the earth. I did stamp them, as the mire of the street, and did spread them abroad. Thou also hast delivered me from the strivings of my people. Thou hast kept me to be head of the heathen, a people which I knew not shall serve me. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient unto me. Strangers shall fade away, and they shall be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be the God of the rock of my salvation. It is God that avengeth me, and that bringeth down the people under me, and that bringeth me forth from mine enemies. Thou also hast lifted me up on high above them that rose up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. He is the tower of salvation for his king, and sheweth mercy to his anointed unto David, and to his seed, for evermore. Chapter 23 Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, 
and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel, said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The Rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning, when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Although my house be not so with God, yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things, and sure. For this is all my salvation, and all my desire, although he make it not to grow. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away, because they cannot be taken with hands. But the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron, and the staff of a spear, and they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. The Tachmanite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains, the same was Adino the Esnite. He lift up his spear against eight hundred, whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shema, the son of Agi, the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together in a troop, where was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground, and defended it, and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. And three of the thirty chief went down, and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in an hold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me a drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men brake through the host of the Philistines, and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem, that was by the gate, and took it, and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this, is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. And Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was chief among three. And he lifted up his spear against three hundred, and slew them, and had the name among three. Was he not most honourable of three? Therefore he was their captain, howbeit he attained not unto the first three. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit, in time of snow. And he slew an Egyptian, a goodly man, 
and the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but he went down to him with a staff, and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and slew him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and had the name among three mighty men. He was more honorable than the thirty, but he attained not to the first three. And David set him over his guard. Asahel, the brother of Joab, was one of the thirty. Elhanan, the son of Dado, of Bethlehem. Shema, the Herodite. Elika, the Herodite. Heles, the Paltite. Ira, the son of Ekesh, the Tekoite. Abiezer, the Anethothite. Mebunai, the Hushathite. Zalman, the Ahohite. Merahai, the Netophathite, Heleb, the son of Bena, a Netophilite, Etai, the son of Rebai, out of Gibeah, of the children of Benjamin, Beniah, the Parathonite, Hedai, of the brooks of Geash, Abilbon, the Arbathite, Asmaveth, the Barhumite, Eliabha, the Shalbonite, of the sons of Jashan, Jonathan, Shema the Hararite, Ahiam the son of Shaver the Hararite, Eliphalet the son of Ahazbai, the son of the Makathite, Eliam the son of Ahitophel the Gilanite, Hezrai the Carmelite, Parai the Arbite, Egal the son of Nathan and Zoba, Benai the Gadite, Zelek the Ammonite, Nerherai the Berothite, armor bearer to Joab the son of Zeruiah, Ira and Ithrite, Gareb and Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite. Thirty-seven in all. Chapter 24 And again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah, for the king said to Joab, the captain of the host which was with him, Go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people. And Joab said unto the king, Now the Lord thy God add unto the people, how many soever they be, one hundredfold, and that the eyes of my lord the king may see it. But why doth my lord the king delight in this thing? Notwithstanding, the king's word prevailed against Joab, and against the captains of the host. And Joab and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king, to number the people of Israel. And they passed over Jordan, and pitched in Aroer, on the right side of the city that lieth in the midst of the river Gad, and toward Jazer. Then they came to Gilead, and to the land of tatim Hotshai, and they came to Danjan, and about to Zidon, and came to the stronghold of Tyre, and to all the cities of the Hivites, and of the Canaanites, and they went out to the south of Judah, even to Beersheba. So, when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. And Joab gave up the sum of the number of the people unto the king. And there were in Israel eight hundred thousand valiant men that drew the sword. And the men of Judah were five hundred thousand men. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. For... When David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, 
go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David, and told him, and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies while they pursue thee? Or that there be three days pestilence in thy land? Now advise, and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, <clears throat> I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great, and let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel, from the morning even to the time appointed, and there died of the people, from Dan even to Beersheba, seventy thousand men. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Arona the Jebusite. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people, and said, Lo, I have sinned, and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. And Gad came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing-floor of Arona the Jebusite. And David, according to the saying of Gad, went up, as the Lord commanded. And Arona looked, and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him, and Arona went out, and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And Arona said, Wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Arona said unto David, let my lord the king take, and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here be oxen for burnt sacrifice, and threshing instruments, and other instruments of the oxen for wood. All these things did Arona, as a king, give unto the king. And Arona said unto the king, The Lord thy God accept thee. And the king said unto Arona, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land, and the plague was stayed from Israel. End of section 33。section 34 of the Holy Bible, the King James Version. First Kings, chapters one through seven. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta. Chapter one. 
Now King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Wherefore his servants said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord the king, a young virgin, and let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom, that my lord the king may get heat. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coasts of Israel, and found Abishag, a Shunammite, and brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair, and cherished the king, and ministered to him, but the king knew her not. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen, and fifty men to run before him. And his father had not displeased him at any time, saying, What hast thou done so? And he also was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after Absalom. And he conferred with Joab the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar the priest. And they, following Adonijah, helped him. But Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan the prophet, and Shimei, and Rei, and the mighty men which belonged to David, were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah slew sheep and oxen and fat cattle, but by the stone of Zoheleth, which is by Enrogel, and called all his brethren the king's sons, and all the men of Judah the king's servants. But Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah, and the mighty men, and Solomon his brother, he called not. Therefore Nathan spoke unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, doth reign, and David our lord knoweth it not? Now therefore come, let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel, that thou mayst save thine own life, and the life of thy son Solomon. Go and get thee in unto King David, and say unto him, Didst not thou, my lord, O king, swear unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? Why then doth Adonijah reign? Behold, while thou yet talkest there with the king, I also will come in after thee, and confirm thy words. And... Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber, and the king was very old. And Abishag the Shunammite ministered unto the king, and Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. And the king said, What wouldst thou? And she said unto him, My lord, Thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And now, behold, Adonijah reigneth. And now, my lord the king, thou knowest it not. And he hath slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and hath called all the sons of the king and Abiathar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host. But Solomon thy servant hath he not called. And thou, my lord, O king, the eyes of all Israel are upon thee, that thou shouldst tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise it shall come to pass, when my lord the king shall sleep with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. 
and lo while she yet talked with the king nathan the prophet also came in and they told the king saying behold nathan the prophet and when he was come in before the king he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground and nathan said my lord o king hast thou said adonijah shall reign after me and he shall sit upon my throne for he is gone down this day and hath slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance and hath called all the king's sons and the captains of the host and abiathar the priest and behold they eat and drink before him and say god save king adonijah but me even me thy servant and zadok the priest and benaiah the son of jehoiada and thy servant solomon hath he not called is this thing done by my lord the king and thou hast not shewed it unto thy servant who should sit on a throne of my lord the king after him then king david answered and said call me bathsheba and she came into the king's presence and stood before the king and the king swear and said as the lord liveth that hath redeemed my soul out of all distress even as i swear unto thee by the lord of god saying assuredly solomon thy son shall reign after me and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead even so will i certainly do this day then bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said let my lord king david live for ever and king david said call me zadok the priest and nathan the prophet and benaiah the son of jehoiada and they came before the king the king also said unto them take with you the servants of your lord and cause solomon my son to ride upon mine own mule and bring him down to gihon and let zadok the priest and nathan the prophet anoint him there king over israel and blow ye with the trumpet and say god save king solomon then he shall come up after him that he may come and sit upon my throne for he shall be king in my stead and i have appointed him to be ruler over israel and over judah and benaiah the son of jehoiada answered the king and said amen the lord god of my lord the king say so too as the lord hath been with my lord the king even so be he with solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my lord king david so zadok the priest and nathan the prophet and benaiah the son of jehoiada and the cherethites and the pelethites went down and caused solomon to ride upon king david's mule and brought him to kihon and zadok the priest took an horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed solomon and they blew the trumpet and all the people said god save king solomon and all the people came up after him and the people piped with pipes and rejoiced with great joy so that the earth rent with the sound of them and adonijah and all the guests that were with him heard it as they had made an end of eating and when joab heard the sound of the trumpet he said where 
wherefore is this noise of the city being in an uproar? And while he yet spake, behold, Jonathan, the son of Abiathar the priest, came, and Adonijah said unto him, Come in, for thou art a valiant man, and bringest good tidings. And Jonathan answered and said to Adonijah, Verily, our lord, King David, hath made Solomon king, and the king hath sent with him Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and the Cherethites and the Pelethites. And they have caused him to ride upon the king's mule, and Sadoc the priest, and Nathan the prophet, have anointed him king in Gihon, and they are coming up from thence rejoicing, so that the city rang again. This is the noise that he hath heard. And also Solomon sitteth on the throne of the kingdom. Moreover, the king's servants came to bless our lord King David, saying, God make the name of Solomon better than thy name, and his throne greater than thy throne. And the king bowed himself upon the bed. And also thus said the king, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which hath given one to sit on my throne this day, mine eyes even seeing it. And all the guests that were with Adonijah were afraid, and rose up, and went every man his way. And Adonijah feared because of Solomon, and arose, and went, and caught hold on the horns of the altar. And it was told Solomon, saying, Behold, Adonijah feareth King Solomon, for lo, he hath caught hold on the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear unto me to-day that he will not slay his servant with the sword. And Solomon said, if he will shew himself a worthy man, there shall not an hair of him fall to the earth. But if wickedness shall be found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent, and they brought him down from the altar. And he came and bowed himself to King Solomon. And Solomon said unto him, Go to thine house. Chapter 2 Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and shew thyself a man and keep the charge of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself, that the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, if thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth, with all their heart, and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, thou knowest also what Joab the son of Zeruiah did to me, and what he did to the two captains of the hosts of Israel, unto Abner the son of Ner, and unto Amasa the son of Jether whom he slew, and shed the blood of war in peace, and put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins, and in his shoes that were on his feet. Do therefore according to thy wisdom, and let not his hoar head go down to the grave in peace. But shew kindness unto the sons of Barzillai the Gileadite, and let them be of those that eat at thy table, 
for so they came to me when i was fled because of absalom thy brother and behold thou hast with thee sheme the son of gera a benjamite of bahurim which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when i went to mehanaim but he came down to meet me at jordan and i swear to him by the lord saying i will not put thee to death with the sword now therefore hold him not guiltless for thou art a wise man and knowest what thou oughtest to do unto him but his hoar head bring thou down to the grave with blood so david slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of david and the days that david reigned over israel were forty years seven years reigned he in hebron and thirty and three years reigned he in jerusalem then sat solomon upon the throne of david his father and his kingdom was established greatly and adonijah the son of haggith came to bathsheba the mother of solomon and she said comest thou peaceably and he said peaceably he said moreover i have somewhat to say unto thee and she said say on and he said thou knowest that the kingdom was mine and that all israel set their faces on me that i should reign howbeit the kingdom is turned about and it is become thy brother's for it was his from the lord and now i ask one petition of thee deny me not and she said unto him say on and he said speak i pray thee unto solomon the king for he will not say thee nay that he give me abishag the shunamite to wife and bathsheba said well i will speak for thee unto the king bathsheba therefore went unto king solomon to speak unto him for adonijah and the king rose up to meet her and bowed himself unto her and sat down on his throne and caused a seat to be set for the king's mother and she sat on his right hand then she said i desire one small petition of thee i pray thee say me not nay and the king said unto her ask on my mother for i will not say thee nay and she said let abishag the shunamite be given to adonijah thy brother to wife and king solomon answered and said unto his mother and why dost thou ask abishag the shunamite for adonijah ask for him the kingdom also for he is mine elder brother even for him and for abiathar the priest and for joab the son of zeruiah then king solomon sware by the lord saying god do so to me and more also if adonijah have not spoken this word against his own life now therefore as the lord liveth which hath established me and set me on the throne of david my father and who hath made me an house as he promised adonijah shall be put to death this day and king solomon sent by the hand of benaiah the son of jehoiada and he fell upon him that he died and unto abiathar the priest said the king get thee to anathoth unto thine own fields for thou art worthy of death but 
I will not at this time put thee to death, because thou bearest the ark of the Lord God before David, my father, and because thou hast been afflicted in all wherein my father was afflicted. So Solomon thrust out Abiathar from being priest unto the Lord, that he might fulfill the word of the Lord, which he spake concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh. Then tidings came to Joab, for Joab had turned after Adonisha, though he turned not after Absalom. And Joab fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord, and caught hold on the horns of the altar. And it was told King Solomon that Joab was fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord. And behold, he is by the altar. Then Solomon sent Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, saying, Go fall upon him. And Benaiah came to the tabernacle of the Lord, and said unto him, Thus saith the king, Come forth. And he said, Nay, but I will die here. And Benaiah brought the king word again, saying, Thus said Joab, and thus he answered me. And the king said unto him, do as he hath said, and fall upon him, and bury him, that thou mayst take away the innocent blood which Joab shed from me and from the house of my father. And the Lord shall return his blood upon his own head, which fell upon two men more righteous and better than he, and slew them with the sword, my father David not knowing thereof, to wit, Abner, the son of Ner, captain of the host of Israel, and Amasa, the son of Jether, captain of the host of Judah, their blood shall therefore return upon the head of Joab, and upon the head of his seed for ever, but upon David, and upon his seed, and upon his house, and upon his throne, shall there be peace for ever from the Lord. So Benaiah the son of Jehoiada went up and fell upon him and slew him. And he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. And the king put Benaiah the son of Jehoiada in his room over the host. And Zadok the priest did the king put in the room of Abiathar. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Build thee an house in Jerusalem, and dwell there, and go not forth thence any whither. For it shall be that on the day thou goest out, and passest over the brook Kidron, thou shalt know for certain that thou shalt surely die. Thy blood shall be upon thine own head. And Shimei said unto the king, the saying is good, as my lord the king hath said, so will thy servant do. And Shimei dwelt in Jerusalem many days. And it came to pass, at the end of three years, that two of the servants of Shimei ran away unto Achish, son of Mekah, king of Gath. And they told Shimei, saying, Behold, thy servants be in Gath. And Shimei rose, and saddled his ass, and went to Gath, to Achish, to seek his servants. And Shimei went, and brought his servants from Gath. And it was told Solomon that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath, and was come again. And the king sent and called for Shimei, and said unto him, Did I not make thee to swear by the Lord, 
and protested unto thee, saying, Know for a certain on the day thou goest out and walkest abroad, any whither, that thou shalt surely die. And thou saidst unto me, The word I have heard is good. Why then hast thou not kept the oath of the Lord, and the commandment that I have charged thee with? The king said, moreover to Shime, Thou knowest all the wickedness which thine heart is privy to, that thou didst to David my father. Therefore the Lord shall return thy wickedness upon thine own head. And King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord for ever. So the king commanded Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, which went out and fell upon him, that he died. And the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. Chapter 3 And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter, and brought her into the city of David, until he had made an end of building his own house, and the house of the Lord, and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Only the people sacrificed in high places, because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God asked, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast shewed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give, therefore, thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honour, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. And 
Solomon awoke, and, behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem, and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings, and offered peace offerings, and made a feast to all his servants. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king, and stood before him. And the one woman said, O my lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass, the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night, because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight, and took my son from beside me, while thine handmaid slept, and laid it in her bosom, and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, This one saith, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is dead. And the other saith, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one, and half to the other. Then spake the woman, whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, O my lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment, which the king had judged. And they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him, to do judgment. Chapter 4 So King Solomon was king over all Israel. And these were the princes which he had. Azariah the son of Zadok the priest, Elihoreph and Ahiah, the sons of Shisha, scribes, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, the recorder. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the host, and Zadok and Abiathar were the priests. And Azariah, the son of Nathan, was over the officers, and Zabud, the son of Nathan, was principal officer, and the king's friend. And Ahishar was over the household, and Adoniram, the son of Abda, was over the tribute. And Solomon had twelve officers over all Israel, which provided victuals for the king and his household. Each man his month in a year made provision and these are their names the son of hur in mount ephraim the son of dekar and mekaz and in chalbim and beth shemesh and ilan bethanan the son of hesed in eruboth to him pertained soko and all the land of hefer the son of abinadab in all the region of dor which had Tapheth 
the daughter of Solomon, to wife. Bena, the son of Ahilud, to him pertained Tanak and Megiddo, and all Bathshean, which is by Zartana, beneath Jezreel, from Bethshean to Abelmola, even unto the place that is beyond Jochnium. The son of Geber in Ramoth Gilead, to him pertained the towns of Jair, the son of Manasseh, which are in Gilead. To him also pertained the region of Argob, which is in Bashan, three score great cities, with walls and brazen bars. Ahinadab, the son of Edo, had Mahanaim. Ahimaz was in Naphtali. He also took Basemeth, the daughter of Solomon, to wife. Bena, the son of Hushai, was in Asher and in Eloth. Jehoshaphat, the son of Parua, in Issachar. Shimei, the son of Elah, in Benjamin. Geber, the son of Uri, was in the country of Gilead, in the country of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and of Og, king of Bashan. And he was the only officer which was in the land. Judah and Israel were many, as the sand which is by the sea in multitude, eating and drinking and making merry. And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms, from the river unto the land of the Philistines, and unto the border of Egypt. They brought presents, and served Solomon all the days of his life. And Solomon's provision for one day was thirty measures of fine flour, and threescore measures of meal, ten fat oxen, and twenty oxen out of the pastures, and an hundred sheep, beside harts and roebucks, and fallow deer, and fatted owl. For he had dominion over all the region on this side the river, from Tifsa even to Asa, over all the kings on this side the river. And he had peace on all sides round about him. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, every man under his vine and under his fig tree, from Dan even to Beersheba, all the days of Solomon. And Solomon had forty thousand stalls of horses for his chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen. And those officers provided victual for King Solomon, and for all that came unto King Solomon's table, every man in his month. They lacked nothing. Barley also, and straw, for the horses and dromedaries, brought they unto the place where the officers were, every man according to his charge. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country, and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezrahite, and Heman, and Chalcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahol and his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. And he spake of trees, from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He spake also of beasts, and of fowl, and of creeping things, and of fishes, and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon, from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. Chapter 5 And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants unto Solomon, 
for he had heard that they had anointed him king in the room of his father, for Hiram was ever a lover of David. And Solomon sent to Hiram, saying, Thou knowest how that David, my father, could not build an house unto the name of the Lord his God, for the wars which were about him on every side, until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God hath given me rest on every side, so that there is neither adversary nor evil occurred. And behold, I purpose to build an house unto the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord spake unto David my father, saying, Thy son whom I will set upon thy throne in thy room, he shall build an house unto my name. Now therefore command thou that they hew me cedar trees out of Lebanon, and my servants shall be with thy servants, and unto thee will I give hire for thy servants, according to all that thou shalt appoint. For thou knowest that there is not among us any that can skill to hew timber like unto the Sidonians. And it came to pass, when Hiram heard the words of Solomon, that he rejoiced greatly, and said, Blessed be the Lord this day, which hath given unto David a wise son over this great people. And Hiram sent to Solomon, saying, I have considered the things which thou sentest to me for, and I will do all thy desire concerning timber of cedar, and concerning timber of fir. My servants shall bring them down from Lebanon unto the sea, and I will convey them by sea in floats unto the place that thou shalt appoint me, and will cause them to be discharged there, and thou shalt receive them, and thou shalt accomplish my desire in giving food for my household. So Hiram gave Solomon cedar trees and fir trees according to all his desire. And Solomon gave Hiram twenty thousand measures of wheat for food to his household, and twenty measures of pure oil. Thus gave Solomon to Hiram year by year. And the Lord gave Solomon wisdom, as he promised him. And there was peace between Hiram and Solomon, and they two made a league together. And King Solomon raised a levy out of all Israel, and the levy was thirty thousand men, and he sent them to Lebanon, ten thousand a month by courses. A month they were in Lebanon, and two months at home, and Adoniram was over the levy. And Solomon had threescore and ten thousand that bear burdens and fourscore thousand hewers in the mountains. Beside the chief of Solomon's officers which were over the work, three thousand and three hundred, which ruled over the people that wrought in the work. And the king commanded, and they brought great stones, costly stones, and hewed stones, to lay the foundation of the house. And Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders did hew them, and the stones corers. So they prepared timber and stones to build the house. Chapter 6 And it came to pass in the four hundred and eightieth year, after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month Ziph, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. And the house which Solomon built for the Lord, 
the length thereof was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof twenty cubits, and the height thereof thirty cubits. And the porch before the temple of the house, twenty cubits was the length thereof, according to the breadth of the house, and ten cubits was the breadth thereof before the house. And for the house he made windows of narrow lights. And against the wall of the house he built chambers round about, against the walls of the house round about, both of the temple and of the oracle. And he made chambers round about. The nethermost chamber was five cubits broad, and the middle was six cubits broad, and the third was seven cubits broad. For without, in the wall of the house, he made narrowed rests round about, that the beams should not be fastened in the walls of the house. And the house, when it was in building, was built of stone, made ready for it, was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. The door for the middle chamber was in the right side of the house, and they went up with the winding stairs into the middle chamber, and out of the middle into the third. So he built the house, and finished it, and covered the house with beams and boards of cedar. And then he built chambers against all the house, five cubits high, and they rested on the house with timber of cedar. And the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning this house which thou art in building, if thou wilt walk in my statutes, and execute my judgments, and keep all my commandments to walk in them, then I will perform thy word with thee, which I spake unto David thy father, and I will dwell among the children of Israel, and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the house and finished it. And he built the walls of the house within with boards of cedar, both the floor of the house and the walls of the ceiling, and he covered them on the inside with wood, and covered the floor of the house with planks of fir. And he built twenty cubits on the sides of the house, both the floor and the walls, with boards of cedar. He even built them for it within, even for the oracle, even for the most holy place. And the house, that is, the temple before it, was forty cubits long, and the cedar of the house within was carved with knops and open flowers. All was cedar. There was no stone seen. And the oracle he prepared in the house within, to set there the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And the oracle in the fore part was twenty cubits in length, and twenty cubits in breadth, and twenty cubits in the height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold, and so covered the altar, which was of cedar. So Solomon overlaid the house within with pure gold, and he made a partition by the chains of gold before the oracle, and he overlaid it with gold. And the whole house he overlaid with gold, until he had finished all the house. Also the whole altar that was by the oracle he overlaid with gold. And within the oracle he made two cherubims of olive tree, each ten cubits high, and five cubits was the one wing of the cherub, and five cubits the other wing of the cherub from the uttermost part of the one wing unto the uttermost part of the other were ten cubits and the other cherub was ten cubits both the cherubims were of one measure and one size the height of the one cherub was ten cubits and so it was of the other cherub and he set the cherubims within the inner house and they stretched forth the wings of the cherubims, so that the wing of the one touched the one wall, and the wing of the other cherub touched the other wall, and their wings touched one another in the midst of the house. 
and he overlaid the cherubims with gold. And he carved all the walls of the house round about with carved figures of cherubims and palm trees and open flowers within and without. And the floors of the house he overlaid with gold within and without. And for the entering of the oracle he made doors of olive tree. The lintel and side posts were a fifth part of the wall. The two doors also were of olive tree. And he carved upon them carvings of cherubims and palm trees and open flowers, and overlaid them with gold, and spread gold upon the cherubims and upon the palm trees. So also made he for the door of the temple posts of olive tree, a fourth part of the wall. And the two doors which were fir tree, the two leaves of the one door were folding, and the two leaves of the other were folding. And he carved thereon cherubims and palm trees and open flowers, and covered them with gold fitted upon the carved work. And he built the inner court with three rows of hewed stone and a row of cedar beams. In the fourth year was the foundation of the house of the Lord laid in the month Ziph. And in the eleventh year, in the month Bool, which is the eighth month, was the house finished throughout all the parts thereof, and according to all the fashion of it. So was he seven years in building it. Chapter 7 But Solomon was building his own house thirteen years, and he finished all his house. He built also the house of the forest of Lebanon. The length thereof was an hundred cubits, and the breadth thereof fifty cubits, and the height thereof thirty cubits, upon four rows of cedar pillars, with cedar beams upon the pillars. And it was covered with cedar, above, upon the beams, that lay on forty-five pillars, fifteen in a row. And there were windows in three rows, and light was against light in three ranks, and all the doors and posts were square with the windows, and light was against light in three ranks. And he made a porch of pillars, the length thereof was fifty cubits, and the breadth thereof thirty cubits. And the porch was before them, and the other pillars and the thick beam were before them. Then he made a porch for the throne where he might judge even the porch of judgment. And it was covered with cedar from one side of the floor to the other. And his house, where he dwelt, had another court within the porch, which was of like work. Solomon made also an house for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had taken to wife, like unto this porch. All these were of costly stones, according to the measures of huge stones, sawed with saws, within and without, even from the foundation unto the coping, and so on the outside toward the great court. And the foundation was of costly stones, even great stones of ten cubits, and stones of eight cubits, and above were costly stones, after the measure of huge stones and cedars. And the great court round about was with three rows of huge stones, and a row of cedar beams, both for the inner court of the house of the Lord, and for the porch of the house. And King Solomon sent, and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. He was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. And he was filled with wisdom and understanding, and cunning to work all works in brass. 
and he came to King Solomon, and wrought all his work. For he cast two pillars of brass, of eighteen cubits high apiece, and a line of twelve cubits did compass either of them about. And he made two chapiters of molten brass to set upon the tops of the pillars. The height of the one chapiter was five cubits, and the height of the other chapiter was five cubits. And nets of checker work, and wreaths of chain work, for the chapiters which were upon the top of the pillars, seven for the one chapiter, and seven for the other chapiter. And he made the pillars, and two rows round about upon the one network, to cover the chapiters that were upon the top, with pomegranates. And so did he for the other chapiter. And the chapiters that were upon the top of the pillars were of lily work, in the porch four cupids. And the chapiters upon the two pillars had pomegranates also above, over against the belly which was by the network. And the pomegranates were two hundred in rows around upon the other chapiter. And he set up the pillars in the porch of the temple. And he set up the right pillar, and called the name thereof Jachin. And he set up the left pillar, and called the name thereof Boaz. And upon the top of the pillars was lily work. So was the work of the pillars finished. And he made a molten sea, ten cubits from the one brim to the other. It was round all about, and its height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. And under the brim of it round about there were knops compassing it, ten in a cubit, compassing the sea round about. The knops were cast in two rows, when it was cast. It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was set above them, and all their hinder parts were inward. And it was an handbreadth thick, and the brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup, with flowers of lilies. It contained two thousand baths. And he made ten bases of brass. Four cubits was the length of one base, and four cubits the breadth thereof, and three cubits the height of it. And the work of the bases was on this manner. They had borders, and the borders were between the ledges. And on the borders that were between the ledges were lions, oxen, and cherubims, and upon the ledges there was a base above, and beneath the lions and oxen were certain additions made of thin work. And every base had four brazen wheels and plates of brass, and the four corners thereof had undersetters. Under the laver were undersetters molten at the side of every addition. And the mouth of it within the chapiter and above was a cubit, but the mouth thereof was round after the work of the base, a cubit and a half. And also upon the mouth of it were gravings with their borders, four square, not round. And under the borders were four wheels, and the axle trees of the wheels were joined to the base, and the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half a cubit. And the work of the wheels was like the work of a chariot wheel. Their axle trees and their knaves and their fellows and their spokes were all molten. And there were four undersetters to the four corners of one base. And the undersetters were of the very base itself. And in the top of the base was there a round compass of half a cubit high. And on the top of the base the ledges thereof and the borders thereof were of the same. For on the plates of the ledges thereof, and on the borders thereof, he graved cherubims, lions, and palm trees, according to the proportion of every one, and additions round about. After this manner he made the ten bases, 
all of them had one casting, one measure, and one size. Then made he ten lavers of brass. One laver contained forty baths. At every laver was four cubits, and upon every one of the ten bases, one laver. And he put five bases on the right side of the house, and five on the left side of the house. And he set the sea on the right side of the house, eastward, over against the south. And Hiram made the labors, and the shovels, and the basins. So Hiram made an end of doing all the work that he made King Solomon for the house of the Lord. The two pillars and the two bowls of the chapiters that were on the top of the two pillars, and the two networks to cover the two bowls of the chapiters, which were upon the top of the pillars, and four hundred pomegranates for the two networks, even two rows of pomegranates for one network to cover the two bowls of the chapiters that were upon the pillars, and the ten bases and ten lavers on the bases, and one sea and twelve oxen under the sea, and the pots, and the shovels, and the basins, and all these vessels, which Hiram made to King Solomon for the house of the Lord, were of bright brass. In the plain of Jordan did the king cast them, in the clay ground between Succoth and Zarthan. And Solomon left all the vessels unweighed, because they were exceeding many. Neither was the weight of the brass found out. And Solomon made all the vessels that pertained unto the house of the Lord, the altar of gold, and the table of gold, whereupon the shewbread was, and the candlesticks of pure gold, five on the right side, and five on the left, before the oracle, with the flowers, and the lamps, and the tongs of gold and the bowls, and the snuffers, and the basins, and the spoons, and the censers of pure gold, and the hinges of gold, both for the doors of the inner house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the house, to wit, of the temple. So was ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord. And Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated. Even the silver and the gold and the vessels did he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. End of section 34